Hi, my name is Rachel Coleman. I'm a current student at South Piedmont Community College, and this is my formal analysis project for art appreciation. Before jumping right into my example for formal analysis, I thought it was important to cover what formal analysis is. Formal analysis of art is a way of critiquing somebody's artwork without adding your own opinions or emotions into the piece. It's most effective when you don't want to add any opinions or you don't want to criticize the artwork based on feelings. Um, I think that formal analysis mainly just focuses on how well the artist used elements of art and principles of design to put their piece together and technique should also be really focused on when doing a formal analysis. My example for this project is going to be Paul Signet's portrait of Felix Fanon. It's called Opus 217 against the enamel of a background, beats and rhythms, and tones and tints, and it was made in 1890. For this slide, I added two pictures of my example. Um, I added the one on the bottom just because it's a little bit more zoomed in so that you can focus on some more of the details in the work, whereas the one in the top is zoomed out so that you can see the scaling and you can see what all is being depicted in the image. I think that this is a great example to use for formal analysis. Even in just the background itself, it adds the use of elements of art very well. It's flooded in patterns, colors, lines, and shapes, and all of them are creating a rhythm and so much variety and all together it just goes together really well. For this slide I added two pictures of my example. Um, I added the one on the bottom just because it's a little bit more zoomed in so that you can focus on some more of the details in the work whereas the one in the top is zoomed out so that you can see the scaling and you can see what all is being depicted in the image. I think that this is a great example to use for formal analysis. Even in just the background itself, it adds the use of elements of art very well. It's flooded in patterns, colors, lines, and shapes, and all of them are creating a rhythm and so much variety. And all together, it just goes together really well. It's also very important to take notice that each section of the pinwheel design in the backdrop seems to have a different type of design in it. These could just be different patterns or a way of the artist wanting to express his capabilities as an artist. We will find out more about the meaning, like I said, later on through the presentation, but that is an important part to mention when going through what is happening in a painting. With the details about the painting, I did already show the scale, but it is about two five feet to three three feet. Um, the media media of it is that it's a painting. It's actually an oil painting, so for the materials used, I just put oil on canvas. It's an abstract piece, so not very realistic, even though it does use a lot of real life things in the piece. It's a 2D artwork, and the elements of design that you're going to be seeing throughout this presentation can be the shape that's going to be found in the patterns, lines that are made within the man's suit, but lines are also going to be used to separate patterns and objects within the background. Um, the rough dot-like texture can also be found throughout the whole entire painting, and values are going to be found in shaded areas and within patterns and the values and shading is also going to help separate the background from objects and other things that are going on within the painting. Here's another picture that I thought would be good to add just so that you can see the real scaling of the painting. It was already added in a slide before but I wanted to add another picture for an example and then this is a little bit more of a zoomed up image of the background itself so that you can really look at how the texture was that I was talking about where it looks rough and dot-like. 
This piece, when I was introducing it, I said that it was made in 1890. Right now, looking at it, it would be considered a historical piece. And I say this because it was part of two really important movements. One being the Neo-Impressionist movement, which was a big part of what Paul Signac did as an artist. He impacted the movement a lot in that stance. And then the other movement was Art Nouveau, and it was developed in 1890 also. This movement went more along the lines of how artists used their own um, decorations and different things to really add personality into their paintings or sculptures, any type of art that they could do. And it kind of brought us more into what is now called modern art. This piece itself was not commissioned. It was only made by Paul Signac. Nobody else was involved in it. And a lot of his works were mainly made as pointillistic art, which I will talk about later on during the presentation as to what that is. Making a formal analysis without having the principles of design and elements of art would be like making a cake without any eggs. It would be not finished. Where I look first during this painting, which is the emphasis, I think that the emphasis of this painting would be the portrait of Felix Fanon. Felix Fanon is the man that I talked about that's depicted in the painting, the one that's holding the top hat and the flower. The negative space in this painting is used by being filled with the backdrop of different colors and patterns and shapes. Um, the pattern throughout this whole entire painting is that every single part has a con um, the swirls that are connecting the background. And so the pattern is just those swirls going side to side and having something in between there. I think personally that this painting um, has many different ways to show variety in patterns and styles. But however, it's all brought together by the similarity in the color palette which I will talk about the color palette later on in the presentation also. In this piece, there's so much happening that almost everything seems like it stands out. However, the things that I thought that were worth mentioning the most was the texture that I've brought up multiple times, how it looks grainy all throughout, and that it kind of looks like Paul Signac did um, the whole piece in tiny strokes. I wrote that earlier on in this presentation. The more that I researched, it turned out that he actually did, and that is what pointillistic is. His artworks were mainly all like this and all had that same grainy texture. I will go more into the actual definition of pointillistic either um, later on, but that's a short one for now. The color that stands out to me the most in this piece is the yellow and orange tones that seem to come up. It comes up in the background, the suit, the skin tone, and the hair color. As you can see, even this red is sort of an orangish red, and then the yellow pops up here, and the oranges have short, sort of a yellow tone, and they all kind of blend in together and bring the whole piece together, along with it blending in with the suit and the skin tone and the hair. I also wanted to mention the implied zigzag line that is in this art piece. It stands out because it brings up a directional force and kind of forces your eye to look the other way. This will be talked about a little bit more in another side soon. However, I find the yellow swirl shape too. I think that that stands out also. I find this interesting because the other shapes that are brought up, like these stars and the circles, those all seem to be more geometric. However, this one right here is more of an organic shape, so I think that that stands out a lot when it comes to the shapes used in this art piece. Composition goes a lot along with balance. They both talk about how everything is connected together. Composition is used to put everything together and balance is how everything is connected together. Contrast in this painting is shown through the shades of colors to express the darker parts of the picture. Shading is also used to separate the different areas of the painting. This all creates a balance throughout the separation of patterns and shapes, along with it keeping about the same color palette all throughout the painting, 
like I mentioned before, the oranges, the yellowish shades, and all throughout the mix of warm yellowish orange shades with the purples and the blues. So both warm and cold colors, but all around the same consistency of the shades. Now I mentioned a few slides ago, directional forces and implied lines. When I was talking about the zigzag pattern, I was mentioning this right here. I drew it on the painting so that you can see it yourself. It kind of moves side to side. And as you can see, it goes from the flower up the arm on the other person's arm. And I kind of thought that this is interesting because it almost just seems as if Paul Signac wanted you to focus on how the body is moving and how he is handing the flower out. Implied lines like this one are ones that you cannot physically see. So when I was talking about implied lines, you would have to draw this out for somebody else to see it, or you would have to mention it to them for them to see it too. Mostly all artworks have this with on them. For this piece, I felt like it wasn't right for me to start my interpretation without explaining the background first. To create an accurate interpretation of this piece, I had to take into account the history of the artwork. Felix Fanon, the man in the painting, was a lot of different things. He had so many different jobs, but for this one, Paul mainly referred to him for his works as a critic in art. He kind of created the term neo-expressionism to describe the movement that tried to improve visual impression of movement and it used more of an approach of form and color. Whereas before, like I said, a lot of the works were very still life, very realistic. Signac's works in the late 1800s are great examples of neo-expressionism. So I thought it was important to mention this before I got into the interpretation. Fanon really seemed to look at painting as a window and into an artist's personality, or at least that's what he thought it should be. So that's why he felt so deeply about neo-expressionism. It was kind of like he thought that those who are artistically talented with using the neo-expressionism movement were something more than just painters. They were doing more with showing who they were than anybody else at the time period. For this piece, Fanon is kind of shown as the emphasis, like I mentioned before, and the lines described in the past slides are the zigzag patterns. And these could contribute to a hint at the title, Opus 217, against the enamel of a background rhythmic and beats, and angles, tones, and tints. Abstract patterns follow throughout the pinwheel design of the background and designs in the piece are probably a hint of the science of color theory and visual rhythm that Signet had used before in his artworks. I am mentioning some facts that I didn't mention quite in the background, but these are also important when focusing on the interpretation. Before make the making of this painting, Fanon really defended the movement himself from many critics. A lot of people were against this movement or they didn't like seeing new things at this time period. This is probably why the painting features him as the main focus against the backdrop. And that's what I think that Paul Signac was um, thinking of through this painting. There are three different theories when coming to a formal analysis or any analysis of art. There is formal theory, which is the one that is mainly being talked about in this presentation, contextual theory, and expressive theory. Contextual theory is using the background to create an analysis of the art piece. Expressive theory is more so looking at how the artist depicted their emotions through the art piece. Right now we're going to talk about formal theory. Opus 217 against the enamel of a background with rhythmic beats and angles, tones, and tints by Paul Signac used a lot of line work, texture, and shading to depict the motion of spinning and create life into the portrait in the painting. This is shown with line by how curved the lines are 
in the background to create a pinwheel motion, almost as if the backdrop itself is spinning. And also, on the other hand, zigzag lines are used both physically and implied to show movement in the man's arms and body in total. It kind of feels like Paul really worked to add movement to this piece and to add movement to the body itself. Shadows are shown through darker hues of the colors rather than only using white and black like charcoal drawings or just graphite drawings would do. The shadows in this piece are used to add a feeling of realism. Although the artwork itself is abstract, the texture of this piece is kind of similar to how Starry Night is mainly created with the use of little lines, and but it's still very unique. Paul Signac was most well known for his pointillistic works like I mentioned before. I think that Paul Signac did an amazing job depicting motion through these elements and with color. I believe it to be very impressive considering that he was one of the few non-impressionists and like the main artists of non-impressionism at this time and artwork like this was very hard to find at this time period. The other theory that we're going to talk about, like I mentioned before, there's going to be two of them, two more of them. But contextual theory is going to be mainly talking about the background, like how I mentioned for the background of interpretation. You have to do a lot more research for this theory, but I decided that I was going to write about who Paul Signac was and who Felix Fanon was. So Paul Signac was a famous French painter and he thrived in many pointillistic artworks, which are pieces that are made in small dots of color and they're placed very strategically to make a picture. They're kind of like um, color by number things, but there's no numbers to follow by. He did it completely himself. Before and during the 1800s, art was only really shown realistically rather than creatively. Even though ideas were still unique, there were very few stylistic paintings. It was a lot less abstract paintings than now we have. Um, when the neo-oppressionists came around and the Art Nouveau movement started in the late 1800s, this very cha this changed a lot. And Felix Fanon during this time period was an art critic who often defended and spoke up about these movements because he thought that they allowed more of an insight into the artist it's himself or the, herself. This piece works well with contextual theory because it shows what both movements were trying so hard to convey and it emphasizes Felix's role in what could have been a new way of art or what could have been called a new way of art. It was kind of like a revolution of art. For the last one, it's expressive theory. Um, I don't really think that this painting works well with expressive theory, but if you were to look at this piece from an emotional standpoint, I believe that this painting could go two ways. The first thought that I have about this painting is that Paul Signac could have actually made the painting trying to convey Felix's pain feelings about the upcoming art styles of the time period rather than his own. In this painting, you can see Felix offering a flower to the viewer who seems to be off canvas. This could have been used as a subtle hint to kind of invite others to join the movement. Felix also referred to Neo-Impressionism art, art as the creation of a superior and purified reality transfused with the artist's personality, which is a direct quote from him. This could be the purpose for adding the background symbolizing the different possibilities Felix thought may come from the new artworks. And then the other way that I was thinking this could go about with expressive theory was that Paul made Fanon the center of the art piece because of how much he agreed and looked up to him for supporting the movement that he was such a big part of. With himself being one of the main artists of the movement, he may have used this painting to express how the newfound ability of his style, of being able to show his style through his art, made him feel kind of like magic. With the top hat and the spinning background and the cane, it kind of appears like he's showing um, Felix as being a magician or as if a magic trick is happening. So that's why I thought of that. But which of these theories fits best? To me, when I was writing this, 
The whole entire point of me making the presentation mainly about formal analysis is because I think that formal analysis describes the piece better than contextual or expressive. I think this because Paul's whole purpose for this painting was to represent Felix's views in the neo-expressionist movement, and the neo-expressionist movement mainly focused on being able to use uncommon elements of art, like lines and color, to create movements in art. I think that Signac's use of color, texture, line, and patterns all work together and create a piece that kind of forces you to just look around the whole entire painting and focus on every little detail of it and just wonder. The art piece itself kind of resembles a magic trick like I talked before. And while contextual theory could be used to describe this piece, given that the background behind the painting, even though it is important, it's all about how to make art with elements of art. And it's talking about designing new potential for what art could have been during this time period. So that's why I think that formal analysis is the best for this piece. Last but not least, this is the citation slide. I will be adding all of these links into the description itself so that you can look at them. I hope that when you look at them, you can learn more about the painting and see what it really is. Hopefully you can agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, you can at least appreciate the art for what it is.